Okay, so now let's take a look at one of the examples from the book. So our goal here is to match the output impedance of a transmitter to the input impedance of a uh, of an antenna, where the antenna is uh, the impedance of the antenna is given by this value, and the output impedance of the transmitter is given by this value. Okay, so one thing to make note of here is that the um, in this example we are looking to match for maximum power delivery. We want maximum power transfer into the antenna. So whenever, you, um, whenever you're doing any kind of matching network and the goal is to maximize power transfer, you always want to um, transform one impedance to the complex conjugate impedance of whatever you're trying to match to. Um, so the reason for that is, let's say that our antenna is modeled by a series inductor. Uh, you know, the resistor would be a value of 75 ohms, and the, indu the inductor would be a value of uh, J15. So this would be the impedance seen looking into the antenna. So our goal is to find an impedance looking in this direction that results in maximum power transfer. So what I'm saying is that, in this case, the um, impedance that we are going for is going to be the complex conjugate of the antenna impedance. And you can see that if it were the complex conjugate of the antenna impedance, then the impedance seen looking into that direction would correspond to a series resistor and a capacitor. And you can see that the two reactant components would cancel out, resulting in a purely resistive load. And of course, this would result in maximum power transfer, which is what our goal is in this case. Um, so the first thing we do is identify the location of the complex conjugate of the antenna impedance on the Smith chart. So again, we do that by normalizing our the impedance of our matching network to 50 ohms. In this case, it doesn't really uh, matter. Actually, I think the, uh, the book uses a characteristic impedance of 75 ohms, but here I'm using 50 ohms just to show you that it doesn't really matter. Um, so again, that location on the Smith chart would be uh, the intersection of the constant resistance circle corresponding to 1.5 and the uh, constant reactance circle corresponding to negative 0.3, which would be this guy here. Next, um, our goal here is to transform the impedance, the output impedance of our transmitter. Uh, basically, the way that I imagine it is, I imagine I'm looking at the impedance into the transmitter, into the output of the transmitter here, and then I imagine my arrow kind of moving in this direction to the right until we get to Zm, where Zm is going to be equal to the complex conjugate of the antenna impedance, of course. Um, so our starting point is going to be the output impedance of the transmitter. So again, we normalize by a characteristic impedance. We see that it's the intersection of the 3.0 and the uh, 1.5 curves here. So like I said before, um, when you're uh, transforming impedance like this, it's oftentimes uh, a lot more useful uh, in order to be able to see the constant uh, conductance circles. Because like I said, uh, when we use capacitors and inductors for our uh, matching networks, our movement on the Smith chart is restricted to the constant resistance and the constant conductance circles. We can see in the little diagram here that um, from the point of view of the output of the transmitter, uh, ZT, the first uh, component uh, is going to be a shunt capacitor. So that means our rotation downward is going to be somewhere along the constant conductance circle that crosses through ZT. Then we're going to have a series inductor, which is going to rotate us upward on a constant resistance circle that crosses through ZM. So kind of our intermediate point that we're looking for is uh, the intersection of, of these uh, two circles. Okay, so the constant conductance circle that passes through ZT and ZC is around 0 0.27. Uh, again, I know that it's not easy for you to see, but you can see that uh, there is a, a 0 0.2 right here and a 0 0.3 right here. 
So I'm estimating that value as uh, around 0 0.27. So the next thing we want to do is figure out the amount of admittance that we're adding uh, in order to make this rotation. So I extend the point ZT up to here, and I extend the point ZC down to here, and I read these two uh, admittance values directly off of the Smith chart. So I have them written over here. The, uh, the susceptance corresponding to uh, the point ZT is negative 0 0.125, and the susceptance corresponding to the uh, point ZC is uh, 0 0.34. So again, we want to figure out the uh, difference between these two susceptance values, and uh, you take your, uh, your final destination point and you subtract off uh, where you started from, and that gives you the change in susceptance uh, for this case. We'll use this value later when we uh, go to uh, calculate the value of the capacitor required uh, in the end. Okay, so next we know that we're going to rotate on a constant resistance circle from uh, ZC up to ZM. So we're going to switch back over, uh, remove the uh, constant conductance circles and the susceptance curves, and just focus on the use of the impedance Smith chart. Um, we extend the, the point ZC out to the, um, the outer edge of the Smith chart here where we can read the reactance corresponding to that particular point as negative 1.83 and then of course we know the reactance corresponding to ZM um, as being the complex conjugate of the antenna impedance and that corresponds to the uh, negative 0 0.3 so the difference between these two values is going to be uh, 1.53 so we can uh, use the the change in susceptance and the change in reactance to figure out the value of, of the capacitor and the inductor. Uh, first of all, don't forget to kind of denormalize. Um, so in this case, we're assuming a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms, and we were given an operation, a frequency of operation of 2 gigahertz, so we're going to have to use that. Here, of course, these uh, reactances are uh, frequency dependent. So in the end, we come up with um, a capacitor value of 0 0.74 picofarads and an inductor of 6.09 nanohenries. And um, these are the uh, and these are the values obtained uh, in the book as well, although they used a, a different characteristic impedance. So this illustrates the uh, you know the idea that um, the Smith chart is normalized uh, to you know, whatever characteristic impedance your your system is uh, operating under. So when you're using the Smith chart to perform impedance transformations, it doesn't really matter what the characteristic in impedance of your system is.